Hello everyone and welcome to the talk to the paper identification of the generalized Connoisseur winner multi-dueling bandits. I'm Victor Banks and this is a joint work together with Björn Hardenhorst and Eike Hüllermeyer. So what's the setting we are considering? It's the setting of multi-dueling bandits where we have a finite set of arms and many. Yeah, and we can interact with these arms by performing actions and the action we uh, allowing is to choose a k-size subset of arms and we refer to this action as a multi-dual and why do we do this well because of the feedback we are receiving yeah, the feedback is the most preferred arm among the subset of arms we have chosen yeah, so in other words the winner of the multi-dual yeah, so you can imagine that the arms in the chosen subset are dueling against each other and only the winner remains. And we make the assumption that the feedback is generated in a stochastic way, in the sense that one arm among the subset S wins with probability PI given S. Yeah? So this probability depends on the chosen subset. And we can cover a couple of practical examples. Yeah, so here's one example, namely that of algorithm selection with parallel runs. So our arms correspond to different algorithms to solve a specific problem. And we obtain a problem instance for which we choose a k-size subset of algorithms. And we run these algorithms in parallel. Yeah, so k is here the number of cores we have available on our machine. And we stop the process as soon as the first algorithm solves the problem instance. Yeah, for a subproblem, this is reasonable because we are only interested whether the subproblem instance is solvable or not. And here we get quite naturally exactly this kind of feedback, namely the algorithm which wins the multi-dual, yeah? so the one which solved the problem first. And also the stochastic feedback assumption is reasonable yeah, because these algorithms are often randomized or the problem instances occur in a random way and there are other reasons which make the stochastic feedback assumption reasonable. And what is the goal? The goal is to find the so-called generalized Condorcet winner. And what is the generalized Condorcet winner? Well, that's the arm among this M many, which has the highest chance to be the winner of any multi-dueling containing it. Now, so formally, if we have a subset of arms of size k where this arm i star is contained in, then the categorical pr probability that i star wins is higher than the categorical probability that any other arm in this set wins. And this is nothing else than a generalization of the Connoisseur winner for pairwise preferences, yeah, where the subset size is always equal to. And we can give an example here for the case of four arms and subset sizes of three, yeah, where we see that the second arm has throughout the highest probability to win the multi-dual, yeah, so that the generalized Connoisseur winner for this example is the second arm. And it's important to note that the generalized Connoisseur winner does not need to exist, yeah, so that's an issue also present for the Connoisseur winner in pairwise preferences, and this is also the case for this generalized Connoisseur winner. But nevertheless, we will assume that the generalized Connoisseur winner exists for our setting, yeah, so for our m many arms we have available. And the goal is now to identify this generalized Connoisseur winner, and we want to make as few as possible actions, yeah, so to conduct as few as possible multi-duels, but then we also have the risk, yeah, if we stop the process of conducting further multi-duels and to output some arm as the generalized Connoisseur winner, that we might miss the generalized Connoisseur winner. Yeah? So we want to guarantee that we maintain a specific given error probability. And the learning protocol is then as follows. In each time step, yeah, we perform an action yeah, so we conduct a multi-dual, that is, we choose a k-size subset of arms as t, yeah, depending on the time step. We obtain the feedback for this subset of arms, namely the most preferred arm among the chosen subset with probability pi given st. Yeah? So this categorical probability depending on the chosen 
subset. And the learning approach we suggest in our paper is the dvoretsky kiefer wolfowitz tournament. And as the name suggests, it's a tournament. More specifically, it's a knockout tournament proceeding in rounds. And the key idea is to maintain a running candidate for the generalized connoisseur winner and champion specific for the round, and also a set of challengers yeah, also specific for the round. And in each round, we do the following. Yeah, we choose k minus one many challengers from the set of possible challengers, yeah, uniform at random. And then we merge them with the current candidate for the generalized connoisseur winner. And this gives us our multi-dual yeah, in the round, which we query multiple times yeah, until we are sure enough which of these arms in the query set and this multi-dual is the winner. Yeah? So the mode of the categorical distribution specified by this query set is R. Now for this purpose, we use a mode identification algorithm, which we come to on the next slides. Yeah, and once we are confident enough, we update the champion for the next round, remove the loser arms from a set of challengers and do this again and again, round by round, round after round, and stop as soon as there are no challengers left. And then the current champion is our suggestion for the journalist connoisseur winner. And then the key question is, of course, when are we confident enough? Yeah? So how can we construct a suitable mode identification procedure? Yeah, for this purpose, we have to recall what we are observing in each learning round, in each time step. Yeah, from a statistical point of view, if we query such a round specific query set as R, well, we observe an IID sample of a categorical distribution yeah, specified by this probability vector PSR, yeah, specific to the query set as R. And then it's reasonable to keep an estimate of this categorical distribution yeah, of this probability vector yeah, via the empirical distribution, which is nothing else than the relative frequency, how many times the specific arm, uh, the corresponding arm has won a query until time step t. Yeah, it's well known that this empirical distribution converges to the ground truth categorical probability vector. And there's even more, we can specify confidence regions via the dvoretsky kiefer wolfowitz inequality as depicted here. And we can visualize these confidence region for the special case of subset sizes of three yeah, via the simplex, yeah, where we have here in each corner the degenerated probability that oh, one specific arm in the subset is chosen. Yeah? So in the, the bottom left corner, we have the probability that uh, the probability one that the first arm is chosen yeah? and so on. And these regions in the triangle are the regions where the mode corresponds to the arm in the uh, respective corner. And then we can uh, construct these confidence regions around the empirical distribution, which is depicted here by the blue triangle. And as long as this blue triangle, yeah, the confidence regions around the empirical distribution is overlapping with at least two uh, regions of these modes, regions, we are not confident enough. But as soon as this confidence region is within one, mode region, then we are confident enough and we know that the corresponding arm is the mode. And well, we can specify the time when this happens yeah, with the help of the dvoretsky kiefer wolfowitz inequality. For this purpose, we define the gaps of the probability, categorical probabilities here and also the minimal gaps uh, via delta. And then we can make the following observation, namely, if the time is at least uh, this given lower bound here, then the mode of the empirical distribution corresponds to the mode of the ground truth categorical probability with probability at least one minus gamma. But the issue is that these gaps are unknown 
but we would need them to compute exactly this lower bound for the time. And what we can do is we can estimate these gaps in a clever way and also decrease the confidence level in a suitable way yeah, via a geometric de decreasing procedure. And this is summarized in the following two algorithms. So the first one is mode ident or abstent. And the idea is here we have this estimate delta hat and a reasonable confidence level till the gamma. And they are constructed in such a way if these two conditions here hold, yeah, namely that the estimate is below the ground truth gap and the mode of the empirical distribution is higher than the probability of any other empirical probability up to this delta hat. And then the mode of the empirical distribution is the mode of the ground truth categorical probability. But what happens if the second condition, which is the only one we can uh, check, and yeah, the first one we cannot check because delta is unknown, what happens if the second is not fulfilled, well then we abstain from ident identifying the mode. Yeah? And we say then we are not sure enough to uh, make sure that the confidence level is maintained. But we need to identify the mode sooner or later. So what we can do is we decrease the estimate, we decrease the confidence level and repeat step one and step two. And sooner or later, we will be sure enough that condition two is fulfilled and then that we have found the mode of this categorical distribution with a certain confidence level. And with this, we can analyze the sample complexity of the dvoretsky kiefer wolfowitz tournament, yeah, the worst case sample complexity, which is of this order here. And we also derive the lower bound for any approach for this setting. And we see that the sample complexity of our approach is up to logarithmic terms matching the lower bound. Yeah? So it's nearly optimal. And we have also further theoretical results of this kind for special classes of interest in our setting. Yeah? And further, we also investigate the empirical performance of our approach yeah? for the dueling bandit case. We see that it can compete and also outperform state-of-the-art algorithms. And for the multi-dueling bandit case, we can also outperform state-of-art algorithm for the placket loose model, yeah? a very interesting and um, important class of categorical probabilities. All right, and what are the plans for future work? So first of all, we want to investigate the impact of the subset size. So what happens if we can query multi-duels, yeah, conduct multi-duels of size up to size k and also what if we relax the goal of finding the generalized connoisseur winner and what if we just want to find an epsilon optimal generalized connoisseur winner so going into an epsilon delta buck learning scenario and last but not least that yeah, we make the assumption that the generalized connoisseur winner exists which might be violated so that it would be also interesting to test this assumption in an online manner. Yeah, so with this, I'm finishing my talk. Thanks for the attention and hope to see you at the poster session.